Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the EPM-3 Heavy Weapons slash Energy Weapons slash Marksman Rifle slash Recently Buffed but Still Isn't Good at All Gun Thing Plasma Cannon. I'm really not sure what this Franken weapon is, except I am very sure that it is not a competitive weapon at all. It's, it's outclassed by almost every single weapon in the game. It was very difficult to get the gameplay that you're seeing here on Detroit. This episode is going to be a little bit lacking on hard stats and has a lot more sort of comparative stats because the truth of the EPM-3 is that it is in no way a competitive weapon and is outclassed by pretty much everything else in the game. It'll kill in three to four shots, almost always going to be three shots, but occasionally if your enemies are incredibly far away, four, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. And this is semi-automatic, it's a marksman rifle, you have to pull the trigger every single time it shoots. Headshots will pretty much do nothing in core mode, you can't two-shot with headshots or really change the range or hardly anything. However, the good thing about headshots is that in hardcore mode you can insta-gib people, and I've had many people tell me that this gun is good in hardcore mode because it kills so quickly. Unfortunately, pretty much every Every gun is good in hardcore mode because they all kill between one and two shots like there's pretty much nothing in hardcore you're gonna survive three shots from and the three shot range on the EPM 3 is crazy though it's about half the map it was a really big buff it used to drop off to like five or six shots to kill at long ranges which made which made it really really awful but now they buffed it to three and it's extremely far away you will almost never be far enough away from the enemy to need four shots to kill but it can occasionally happen again this is like half the map it's absolutely crazy and really the strength of this weapon what it brings to the table, what it offers to you stat-wise or, uh, you know, interesting play-wise, is that it has a semi-automatic rate of fire of about 1200 RPM. That's the coded rate of fire. When it gets into the game, it'll round down a little bit. If you have a modded controller, if you have a godlike trigger finger, if you're playing on PC, you can bind it to mouse wheel, or if you've just got a good PC finger, you can shoot it extremely fast. It'll fire faster than all the other LMGs, than the assault rifles, than the SMGs. It's really a bullet hose. Unfortunately, if you fire anywhere near that rate of fire, you're going to find that the recoil is extremely high and I would like to note that most people can't fire it anywhere near that fast most people's uh, semi-automatic speeds are probably gonna be about four to five hundred to six seven hundred on the high end of things kind of rate of fire so you're gonna get to see it shooting a lot slower than that when you use it but the recoil is extremely high each shot kicks vertically and kicks quite a lot and due to the unusual design of the end of the barrel as it kicks vertically you are going to lose track of your target grip is pretty much mandatory on this weapon if you plan to do anything with it at long ranges it's very difficult to control without a grip and a red dot sight's almost essential too because the iron sights seem misaligned for whatever reason the bullets come out lower than where the iron sights are looking like the weird bullet plasma projectile trail range is just lower than where the sights are so you can aim at somebody's head and it seems like the bullets come out a little bit lower and hits them in the body it's it's just a little bit odd and it has very extreme muzzle flash it's very bad on the iron sights but it's even very noticeable here when I'm using the red dot sight and the muzzle flash is very very strong not only does it flash but it smokes and leaves this weird blue trail and the trail even doesn't come out from where the red dot does and it has a very unusual feel to it it makes you lose track of your targets it's very frustrating to use in that regard guard. The hip fire is bad because this is a heavy weapon just like the light machine guns. It's basically got LMG hip fire which is extremely wide or something kind of like the MK14 Mark 14. You're not going to be able to hip fire very many people with this unless you're just straight up in barrel stuffing range at which point almost any other gun, gun in the game or honestly just punching them is probably a better strategy than trying to get three shots on them semi-automatically. Rounds cannot penetrate enemies or walls and all of my experiences with this gun I have not been able to shoot through a body and hit the person behind it nor have I been able to shoot through a wall a glass or pretty much anything it doesn't seem to have any sort of penetration to it whatsoever which means the enemies can take cover behind even the lightest of cover uh, a cardboard box probably or plywood and not even the invincible bananas that are in previous Call of Duty games and take no damage it has no splash damage it has an unusual animation it kind of kicks and flashes and looks like it would kind of blob on impact but it has no splash damage and for whatever reason, I, I have a suspicion that the bullets might have a travel time. It might just be my poor aim or the poor feel of the gun, but they don't seem like they quite hit where I point them. Or maybe it's the blue trail misleading me. I don't know why they would code it to be a projectile. That doesn't make sense, and it hasn't happened in any Call of Duty game ever. But it is something that makes me wonder because it just doesn't quite hit right. Run speed is 85%. That's the same as all the other heavy weapons, which is extremely slow. 
that means you're going to be moving around kind of at riot shield speed, at light machine gun speed, and that sort of thing. And that means that the other three-shot weapons, like the submachine guns and the BAL and the HBAR, are going to be running around faster than you are. Aim down sight speed, strafing speed, sprint in and out speed, and all these sort of speeds are all slow. They're all LMG speeds, which means that somebody with a submachine gun or assault rifle can aim down sights twice as fast as you can, they can strafe almost three times as fast as you can, and they can move in and out of sprinting about twice as fast as you can, which puts you at a disadvantage in about 99.99% of your gunfights with the EMP3, which makes it not very fun. Even though I stack all of the attachments on this, there aren't quite enough attachments in the game to make it 100% viable. You can fire about 12 rounds before the uh, heat sink overheats. Cooldown is a little bit slow and it can't be cancelled. Like the EM1 you can kind of sprint and then smack it back in, but you have to go through the whole animation so you kind of can't sprint cancel the cooldown on this one which is really frustrating. It gets me killed a few times. 12 rounds being fired, full auto mind you, just pop up a pop as fast as I can is not very many. I know it's not designed to be used that way, but it's pretty limiting. You can put a heat sink on it and it goes up significantly, but I can't put a heat sink on it because I need a red dot sight because the iron sights are misaligned and I need a grip because it kicks so bad and I need a stock because my move speed is so low I don't have room for any of these other sort of attachments. As for what I think about the EPM3, I think it is one of the worst guns in Call of Duty history, even after the buff. The idea is solid. We're going to give you a marksman rifle that you don't have to reload and, you know, maybe we'll make it a heavy weapon to balance it out, but unfortunately with so many three-shot kill weapons in this game and with the speed and pace of the game, marksman rifles in this game are extremely difficult to use as is and giving you one with extremely gimped recoil, extremely gimped mobility, aim down sights, time, and everything else just makes it near impossible to use. The niche on this weapon is supposed to be if you have an excellent trigger finger, you can smash it really, really quick and dump out a whole bunch of bullets on people and kill them quickly. Unfortunately, few people, at least on console, have trigger fingers like that. The recoil is so strong, you'll almost never hit those bullets. And, you know, maybe 1% or less of the entire player population can ever make use of that. So I really don't think this is a very good or viable gun. And if you haven't got the hint from this in-depth episode, I very highly recommend that you don't bother using it. That's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, or check out the previous episode, which is on the Quick Draw Grip, which is very nice, and the next episode I'll make when I get back home from my holiday vacations, which won't be too long. Drifter out. Gun, please bear with me. This in-depth episode is going to be a little bit... L <laughs> <laughs> I pooted. <laughs> That's disgusting! <laughs>